Good morning, everyone. Please join me in the call to worship printed in your bulletin. Give ear, O my people, to my teaching. Incline your ears to the words of my mouth. I will open my mouth in a parable. I will utter dark sayings from of old, things that we have heard and known that our ancestors have told us. We will not hide them from our children. We will tell to the coming generation the glorious deeds of the Lord and God's might and the wonders that God has done. The Lord established a decree in Jacob and appointed a law in Israel, which God commanded our ancestors to teach to their children, that the next generation might know them, that the children yet unborn and rise up and tell them to their children so that they should set their hope in God and not forget the works of God, but keep the Lord's commandments. Please stand if you are able and join us in the opening hymn, We Give Thee But Thine Own, Chalice 382. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad. We gather together today in the name of Jesus Christ in the presence of God's love, mercy, and grace and joy. Whoever you are, wherever you are in life's journey, know that you are welcome here today just as you are into God's grace and into God's love. Let us sing our gratitude and our glory to God. Wonderful. You may be seated. I'm going to have the children come forward. Okay. Today I'm going to give you a little survey. I handed one out to everybody as they came in because um, we're going to do something called a visioning session where we just talk a little bit about what we hope could happen. 
at church. So if anything in the world could happen at church, if we could change the building or anything could happen, what would you like to have at church? Can you think about that? What would you like to have at church? A feast? A feast? Yeah. yeah, what would be in the feast? Uh, food and stuff. What's your favorite food? Uh, well, pizza and uh, macaroni. Yeah, so pizza and macaroni and cheese every week? Okay, I think that's a good future plan. What else could we do that would be fun? You know what I thought would be fun? Is if we built a slide from up there down here. Don't you think that would be cool? Yeah. Cotton candy? Should we have cotton candy at church? Do you think? Popcorn? Would that make it all better? I think it could. Any other ideas that you have? Okay, you dream about it, because I just want you to think about what is possible. Because anything is possible, really. We can do whatever we want to do with the future, right? Because it hasn't happened yet. That's kind of the good thing about the future, is we can do whatever we want, because God is ready to just help us when we want to make a wonderful church. So we're doing something called visioning. Can you say that word? Visioning. visioning. And in the Bible, it says that God will help us have a vision for how the church should be. So we can make it a place where people love to come, where people have a lot of fun, where people feel God's love, and where they feel welcomed. So maybe you guys can think a little bit about what your ideas might be. We're gonna put together something called a vision board. And so we're gonna put pictures of our vision of our future in there. So you guys think about it and talk to your moms and dads and see if maybe you can find some pictures that you can bring to put on the vision board for church. Does that sound good? Okay. Well, thank you for coming. You get to go to Sunday school now with your teachers. There's Miss Michelle waiting for you. Okay. Now, we have all kinds of announcements. We got a lot going on here. I did hand to you this worksheet. And so I gave you a little preview of what that's going to be about. We're going to have a visioning session. Um, I'm going to lead that. I'm going to do one for one group, and then I'm going to do another process with the bell choir. Um, and so um, it's just a process that we're going to go to to kind of think about our future. So this is your homework. Take it home, fill it out, and then you can bring it back next week, and we'll do that. Um, also, are you doing this announcement? OK. All right. So then I have a number of people who have announcements, so come on up. Three things. We still need turkeys for Project Food on Wednesday. Russ will be in the kitchen around 11.30 in the morning if that's a more convenient time for you to drop it off already cooked. That's the thing, already cooked turkey. Um, the second thing, we do have a photographer to take um, our holiday pictures at Project Food. We just need somebody who is willing to set the tableau like Amy did and coordinate that. So if you're interested in doing that, please see me. Um, and also this Monday, tomorrow, is our Taizé Community uh, Meditation and Prayer Service. This time it's hosted at All Saints Episcopal Church on um, uh, Magnolia and that street, Teresina. Um, and it's at 7 o'clock. We would really like to have more people come out. And then our turn to host it will be in December. And we hope that you will come out for that as well. Hello everyone, <clears throat> a couple of things, um, you will have an insert and you might have seen online as well, celebrate the season with FCC Riverside, we're so excited about all the wonderful stuff that's going to be happening, that is happening, that's going to be happening, so look forward to that, mark your calendar for lots of things. Uh, in addition to that, there's many, many ways for you to be involved, um, and with that I have some clipboards with sign-up sheets. Um, so we, after service, they'll be out in the narthex. Um, we need some Advent readers, um, special reading um, every Sunday during Advent. We also, in uh, support of our Christmas concert on December 16th, no, sorry, December 9th, it's the week before, December 9th, we're going to have um, a little reception afterwards. And so there's a sign-up sheet for sweet items, if you feel like baking um, some fun stuff. And there's also a sign-up sheet for savory items, um, if you'd like to put together a cheese tray or a charcuterie board, um, something good like that. <clears throat> so we will have those ready for you. And then my last announcement 
is we have the regular sign-up sheets for lay readers, for um, coffee hour hosts, and um, what's my last one? Flowers at the altar, um, our beautiful altar. So um, we actually need some sign-ups for next week. So if you are feeling led, um, we'd love to have you do that. And then all, all of the uh, dates in December are available too. So hope to see you, hope to thank you very much for um, signing up in anticipation of that. You may remember last week I mentioned that we had an activity that we're hoping you will participate in on uh, the 18th next Saturday. That is where we set up and we have chairs for folks who would like to make a donation of $20 to see the Festival of Lights from a chair in our front yard. We, um, and there's been an announcement in the Outlook Online um, and I think it indicates that we need folks starting at 1 o'clock. We actually need folks starting at 10 o'clock. So see, you don't have to stay home and be bored all morning. You can come and help us <laughs> set up, and I will be in the Madonna room um, to sign you up. Thank you so much. <laughs> Any other announcements? I don't think so. Okay, well this is a special weekend. We celebrate veterans this weekend. And so I'm just gonna ask um, anyone here, if you've served in the forces, in the armed forces, please raise your hand. Okay, can you stand actually? Can we um, thank them with a round of applause? Thank you for serving our country. Thank you so much, thank you. Anyone here uh, have loved someone, had a family member or a friend that served in the armed forces? Yes, let us give a round of applause to these people too because you've given also a sacrifice. Um, so we thank you on this Veterans Day, uh, our veterans and all the veterans and those serving in our military, um, the courage that it takes to do that for us, thank you. Um, today we will celebrate a baptism for Denise Lee just following our service, that's a private baptism. Um, and today is also our birthday blessing. So who has a birthday in November? Okay, these are special people. The November birthdays. Okay, go to the microphone and tell us how old you are. <laughs> <laughs> Over under 30, right? Yeah, okay. <laughs> Just say your name, that's fine. I'm Jean, 81. Okay, Jean. I'm <laughs> Vicky, my birthday is November 7th, the same as Jean's. Oh, cool, okay. And I'm Tracy, and my birthday is in two days. Okay, time to get presents yet for Tracy. I'm Dawn, my birthday is the 25th, and she's not here today. Tracy Lene, my couple church daughter, is the same thing. Oh, good, we'll Different. celebrate her. Okay, well, let us sing happy birthday to God's children today. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday. Thank you for that, everyone. <laughs> Stick around after church. Today we do have um, some treats and some fellowships, so um, make sure that you take some time to stay. Um, let's take a moment right now to say hello and welcome those around you. If you see a new face, um, or someone that you haven't seen for a while, make sure they get a special welcome from you. Welcome. <laughs> Good to have you here today, all of you. Bright face. I know my hands are always cold. They always are. It's, I... Okay, just don't fall off. Bill! 
You know that the church trustees are working on the budget for next year, and I ran across the most fascinating article. You won't believe what it said. It said that generosity has health benefits. What? What are you saying? Well, I read this article that says giving doesn't just help the recipient, it also helps the giver. What do you mean? How does it help the giver? Well, generosity is good for the heart. Giving can lower blood pressure, help you live longer, increase your lifespan, and decrease depression. The effects of generosity are similar to the positive results brought on by a healthy diet and exercise. Where did you read this, anyway? In an article from the Cleveland Clinic. That's a pretty reputable clinic. There's science behind this. It's what research has shown. OK, let me make sure I understand this. If I am generous enough, I don't have to worry about exercising and eating healthy. <laughs> well, I didn't quite say that. But if you give generously to FCC, these positive effects are doubled. Did the article say that? No, but I did. <laughs> OK, let's all improve our blood pressure, increase our lifespan, reduce stress, and eliminate depression by giving generously to church. That sounds good, and I'm sure it sounds good to the trustees, too.
Let us pray. God of mercy and healing, we lift up before you today those in our own lives that we know are in need of your healing. We pray for Mike, the friends and family of James, for Jeffrey, Mark, Harry, Richard, Jonathan, Darlene, Karen. We pray especially today for Denise, and we pray for Natalie and her baby. We pray for the friends and family of DJ, for Isaac and Shira, for baby Oliver, and for this week's prayer families, Raymond, Louise and Walter, and Tracy and Sherry. Today we especially pray for your frightened people in Israel and Palestine and their families and friends throughout the world. We pray for all those who are suffering throughout the world in the midst of war, oppression, and civil unrest. We pray that you will instill wisdom in leaders of all nations and bring peace to your people. God, we pray for all veterans and those who are serving in our military. We pray for the families who've supported these brave men and women who have served our nation. And we especially pray for those who have lost loved ones. Hold these families in your grace, and we thank you for the courage you have granted each of them. Hear now our prayers for all those we've named together in your presence, as well as those that we now hold up before you in this time of silent prayer. Gracious God, hold our lives and loved ones in the palm of your hand. Send your Holy Spirit into the brokenness and suffering of this world and lift our vision toward your hope. Amen. Please join me in reading the prayer of confession in our bulletin. What love you have, you have given, given us, us, O God, God that, that we should, should be called your children. Forgive us for the many ways we forget to live as your children. Remind us that we are claimed by you even when we do not reflect your love. Remind us that the world did not know Jesus and guide us to live with integrity when the world does not know us. Create in us a clean heart and renew a right spirit within us as we confess our shortcomings in this time of silent prayer. Dear friends in Christ, all is well for you with God. The past is over and the future is open for you to live in joy and peace. Through the love of Christ, the case against you has been dismissed. There is therefore now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. For your God of love has set you free. Amen.
Our first scripture lesson today is from 1 Thessalonians 4, verses 13 to 18. But we do not want you to be uninformed, brothers and sisters, about those who have died, so that you may not grieve as others do who have no hope. For since we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so, through Jesus, God will bring with him those who have died. For this we declare to you by the word of the Lord, that we who are alive, who are left until the coming of the Lord, will by no means precede those who have died. For the Lord himself, with a cry of command, with the archangel's call, and with the sound of God's trumpet, will descend from heaven, and the dead in Christ will rise first. Then we who are alive, we who are left, will be caught up in the clouds together with them to meet the Lord in the air, and so we will be with the Lord forever. Therefore, encourage one another with these words. The second reading comes from the book of Matthew, 25, verses 1 through 13. Then the kingdom of heaven will be like this. Ten bridesmaids took their lamps and went to meet the bridegroom. Five of them were foolish and five were wise. When the foolish took their lamps, they took no oil with them, but the wise took flasks of oil with their lamps. As the bridegroom was delayed, all of them became drowsy and slept. But at midnight, there was a shout, Look, here is the bridegroom. Come out to meet him. Then all those bridesmaids got up and trimmed their lamps. The foolish said to the wise, Give us some of your oil, for our lamps are going out. But the wise replied, No, there will not be enough for you and for us. You had better go to the dealers and buy some for yourselves. And while they went to buy it, the bridegroom came, and those who were ready went with him into the wedding banquet and the door was shut. Later, the other bridesmaids came also, saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. But he replied, Truly, I tell you, I do not know you. Keep awake, therefore, for you know neither the day nor the hour. We began our service this morning reading from Psalm 78, and we read... Give ear, O my people, to my teaching, and clear, incline your ears to the word of my mouth. I will open my mouth in a parable. And then we read a parable. Our gospel story today is a parable about God's gift of life for you. Our story is the parable of the bridesmaids from Matthew, and in it we have wise and foolish bridesmaids, five of each. As someone who has officiated hundreds of weddings throughout my career, I can attest to the fact that both exist. <laughs> the foolish said to the wise, give us some of your oil for our lamps are going out. But the wise replied, no, there will not be enough for you and for us. You had better go to the dealers and buy some for yourselves. Five of the bridesmaids planned ahead and filled their lamps with oil but the others were too busy with their hair and makeup to worry about anything relevant. <laughs> Not that that's ever happened at a wedding, I mean. It's a story of investment. The wise girls invested in their lamps, and so when the time came, they had the light that they needed. The foolish girls didn't, maybe because they forgot or because they were too distracted or, well, they were just girls that don't plan ahead. And maybe all of us are kind of like these flighty bridesmaids sometimes. Maybe we are distracted by everything going on in the world and just forget to invest in the light. But we are called to invest in the light, to be ready, to show up for something important. And what does that mean for us if we step outside of this parable the whole world is full of invitations. We're invited to invest in all sorts of people and places and things. We're invited to invest in ideas and policies and programs and movements. We're invited to save this child for just $9.95 a month or save this lost pet or this endangered species for just a nickel a day. 
St. Jude, the Shriners, the Red Cross. We're invited to try a whole variety of prescription medications for a variety of illnesses we may not have even realized we have. Sometimes we're invited to invest in complete strangers. Our family may require a certain level of investment, our neighbors, our friends, our community, our workplace, our library, public radio, and Sesame Street. And throughout any given day, we are given these opportunities to invest in the world. We're invited to invest our time, our energy, our money, ourselves. And so, so how do we know how to make good investments? The wise bridesmaids in our parable from Matthew invested in light. They filled their lamps ahead of time before things started to get real. And when the time came, when the day turned to dark, they needed light and they were prepared. The story invites us into this kind of wisdom. The thing about light is that it helps everyone around us who needs to see. Having light, being light, carrying light with us into life allows us to see, but it also sheds light for others to see in the end. And it saves us if life gets dark. The difference between light and darkness is that darkness is the lack of light. Darkness is empty. If we invest in darkness, we get nothing in return. And sometimes, much like our distracted bridesmaids from this story, we may end up investing in something dark just because we forgot to invest in the light. We might find ourselves in a dark relationship or in the company of unhealthy people, in a dead-end job, or wrapped up in confusing ideas. There's a time in this part of the country that some of you may remember well when young people were getting caught up in cults there were movements led by some dude who claimed to be Jesus. And for some confused young people, it seemed to be light and hope that ended up in darkness and oppression and in some cases, even death. These young people believed they were investing their lives in the light only to discover that they had invested everything in something very dark. And perhaps in ways that are less dramatic, we can find ourselves investing in relationships, organizations, and ideas that seem okay at the start, but end up being less than healthy choices for our spirit in the end. When all is said and done, we really all just want to live like these wise bridesmaids. We want to be like the girls that planned ahead and made good choices. We want to be the one who has what we need when we need it. We hate being that person who feels like they've run out or are empty or got left in the dark. This passage from Matthew says, The foolish said to the wise, Give us some of your oil, for our lamps are going out. But the wise replied, No, there will not be enough for you and for us. You'd better go to the dealers and find some for yourselves. And while they went to buy it, the bridegroom came. And those who were ready went with him into the wedding banquet. And then the door was shut. Later the other bridesmaids came also, saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. But he replied, Truly I tell you, I do not know you. Keep awake, therefore, for you, do, for you know neither the day nor the hour. Okay, so the bridesmaids missed the reception. Believe me, it happens from time to time for various reasons. It doesn't mean that they were condemned to hell in the parable. It just means that they missed the good part, the party. They missed the whole thing. This passage from Matthew is a lesson for us that ensures we won't miss the best parts of life. It's a lesson to help us discover our bliss. And this is the lesson. Invest in the light early and often. We don't want to be the foolish girl that misses the good part, the party, the best parts of life, just because we were too distracted or confused to remember to get our act together. None of us want to be that person. The moral of the story is to keep awake. We're invited to stay awake, to be spiritually awakened, to invest in the light and be ready for something wonderful to happen. 
We are called to anticipate joy and celebration. We've all had that teacher or coach or parent who would tell us to look alive. Pay attention. Get your head in the game and your eye on the ball, Kristen. It's because they knew that if we did stay awake and alert, we might actually win this game. God invites us to stay awake and invest in the light because God wants us to win. God invites us to stay awake and invest in the light so that we don't miss the best part, the party, the whole point of being all dressed up and being a bridesmaid at all. God has made it possible for us to recognize what is worth our investments and what is not. God has given us the capacity to know when we are leaning toward light or when we are falling back into darkness. We can feel it. You know it. It's a still, small voice, our conscience, our Jiminy Cricket. It's there with us, this gift of guidance, if we stop and listen and breathe it in. Some say it's angels. Some say it's an echo of our grandmother. Perhaps it is a voice that we kind of recognize and know. The interesting thing about this parable is that it wasn't a matter of resources. It doesn't say that the foolish girls couldn't afford the oil. It was just that they forgot to get it. Then all of a sudden they find themselves begging. Life is like this. There actually is enough for everyone. We are not lacking resources. There's plenty of money, there's plenty of food, there's plenty of clothing for everyone. In God's economy, there is always enough of everything. The problem wasn't an oil shortage. The problem was planning. The problem was that some of these girls weren't paying attention to what they were supposed to be doing. They were not anticipating and honoring the gift of this invitation to this spectacular wedding banquet. And so it is with us, we are called to be present, to be alert in our spirit, anticipating something wonderful at every turn. God wants us to be listening and prepared for the good things that are coming. You know, it's like that minute when we turn the corner and the kids can see the top of that castle at Disneyland. We sure want them to be awake for that because we don't want them to miss it and because we paid way more than we thought we were going to have to pay to be there. <laughs> the truth is that God has a marvelous gift for you. It is your life. God wants you to be awake enough to see it all, to experience it. Do we even see it? All those amazing colors, all the smells and the sounds of every day. Do we hold up enough light in our life to see the gift that it truly is? Do we see the colors of a changing sky? Do we really notice birds, birds that fly all on their own? Do we hear the music? Do we dance? Do we dance? Do we laugh? Do we live? Do we really live in this gift of life that God has given us? Dear friends in Christ, God doesn't want you to miss the occasion that is your life. Life, in fact, is an occasion, and we are invited to rise to it. Stay awake. Rise to this blessed occasion of your existence. This is your one amazing, wildly precious life. Stay awake for it. Don't miss it. Fill your lamp and turn on the lights. Be present for the miracles. This breath, this day, this very moment is one that God doesn't want you to miss. This is the day that God has made for you. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it.
Our service continues with our cheerful and healthy and life-enhancing giving.
Let us pray. God of abundance, bless and multiply all that is offered here today. Use our prayers and our gifts to bring hope and healing to your people through us as we seek to be your light in this world. God of hope and new life, awaken our spirits to this day. Open the eyes of our heart to see and experience the gift of life that you have given us. Fill us with the joy of your promises and grant us the peace from you that passes all understanding. All this we pray in the hope of Jesus Christ who has taught us to pray. Creator God, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And now, until we gather again to seek God's grace in this place, may God's mercy meet you in this day. May God's love comfort you for this moment. May God's presence strengthen you for your journey. And may God's hope sustain your joy. Amen.